Sponsored by Brilliant. Get smarter every day and save 20%. Link in the description. Mac Pro, MacBook Pro, iPad Pro, iMac Pro, Powerbeats Pro, iPhone Pro? There's a rumor going around that Apple might just call one or more of this fall's iPhones the iPhone Pro, or maybe the iPhone 11 Pro. It's unclear. Also unclear what beyond just adding the label Apple could do to make the iPhone really truly worthy of the name Pro. Or it could just be a way to reset to make the R model the new normal and use the word Pro to justify higher prices on even higher end flagships. That is, if the name Pro even means anything anymore. Curious, I asked all of you on Twitter what you thought and wow did you respond. So hit subscribe, Homelander that bell gizmo so you don't miss the next video, and then let's go over it all. I'm Rene Ritchie and this is Vector. The iPhone Pro rumor started with Twitter account CoinX, Coin10, at Coin. <laughs> Last year, just before the September event, Coin accurately leaked the names of the 2018 iPhones. More recently, the account has been tweeting out iPad rumors, some of which have already come to pass, others of which are still pending. Suffice it to say, the account has proven credible enough that its last tweet got a bunch of sites and channels all up in a frenzy. That tweet? Quote unquote pro for iPhones? Crazy naming schemes over the past few years. Now, just to be clear, Apple can call any iPhone anything it wants. Well, anything that doesn't violate any trademarks Apple isn't eager and prepared to fight. Marketing and execs just have to sign off on it in time for it to get on all the promotional material. That's it iPhone 11, iPhone edition, iPhone dragonborn, seriously, anything. Assuming Pro isn't just a marketing name, assuming Apple really does wanna make an iPhone that's more attractive to Pro users, assuming we think beyond just USB-C, which I can already feel just about all of you slamming into the comments right this very now, here's everything else you told me you wanna see. When Apple made the iPad Pro, they made it bigger, from 10.5 inches to 12.9 inches. Apple already made the iPhone bigger with the 6 Plus and the 10s Max, but they there have been and are Android phones even bigger than that, ludicrously bigger. And the bigger the screen, the better and more complex you can make multi-touch interfaces. Though if it gets too much bigger, you basically have the iPad mini. There have been rumors of bigger and smaller iPhones for 2020, so there's that. Apple also gave the iPad Pro a keyboard. No, not a BlackBerry style built-in keyboard. We can leave all of that to Crackberry Kevin and his beloved key too, but the smart connector and smart keyboard. Thing is, I can't recall there ever being a successful phone specific external keyboard before, because physics. Does that mean Apple couldn't make some kind of transformer like portable pro keyboard? No, it's one more area ripe for innovation. It just doesn't seem likely to me. Comment below if you disagree. What does seem likely, or simply more to my own personal liking, would be the same Apple Pencil support that really kicked off the iPad Pro. I covered this in a video last week, so I won't belabor it again here, but so many of you had a top of mind and list that I'm sure as hell gonna sum it all up. Apple Pencil, especially with an optional smaller pencil, would make the iPhone the ultimate pocket note and sketchbook and would allow more complex interfaces to be manageable on the smaller display, which could help open the door for more pro apps. When business people hear the word pro, especially business people from the early days of computing, they hear pro as in productivity, everything from office suites to getting things done. Apple already does a bunch of continuity stuff to make iPhone owners more productive on their iPads and Macs, including handing off application state so you can work on the same dock while on the go or on the bigger screen. Same with continuity clipboard and AirDrop so you can easily move data back and forth. But that only works if you have another device and it's your other device. It doesn't let your iPhone take over any arbitrary iPad or Mac or let your iPhone become a Mac-like device. To push it further, Apple could create a guest mode for macOS that, when you plug in an iPhone, creates a virtual environment where all your stuff just works on the same big screen. Or if there is no Mac, you could plug into a bigger display, use any Bluetooth mouse or keyboard, or even a hub, and effectively make it a quote unquote iOS Mac for however long you need it. Like Samsung's DeX or Microsoft's Continuum, but simpler and more coherent, especially with Catalyst and Swift UI further decoupling app logic from interface, and maybe ARM Max one day removing much of the hardware hurdle as well. 
It would be great for people who travel between offices or work areas a lot and don't want to lug even a laptop around with them. Same deal with creative pros who want to record audio, shoot photos, or grab video on the go, but then stop off quickly to edit with big screen optimized versions of apps like GarageBand, Lightroom, or iMovie slash LumaFusion. You'd need extra RAM to run extra intense applications though, and higher storage, base level, but also maximum, one terabyte, maybe more. And while you're at it, just throw in the iPad Pro's X version of the A-series processor as well. But I'm gonna try really hard to keep this out of the realm of sci-fi, at least for now. What seems like it would please more than enough of you is just the iPhone equivalent of side-by-side -side apps, top and bottom apps, and picture-in-picture -picture video. That'd be especially useful on an even slightly bigger screen and with a bigger battery to go with it. How big a battery to avoid it becoming a brick? And would fast 45 watt wired and 15 watt wireless charging get you to settle for a better balance? Let me know your preference in the comments below. Some of you clearly want as much, if not more, for your ears as you do for your eyes. There were a few requests to get the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack back, of course, but mostly from people who are still super salty that it's gone in the first place, not for audio producers who want to use it to hook up to pro gear, you know, XLR notwithstanding. With Google and even Samsung now finding their ditch jacking courage and Apple doubling down on deletion with the iPad Pro, the headphone jack returns just seems an unlikely tale. A better DAC, digital to analog converter, and Apple Music HD to do for audio files what iTunes 4K HDR is doing for cinema files was also suggested, but I kind of think that, like 4K HDR, should be an option for everyone, not just pros. Powerbeats uses the word pro for pro athletes. In other words, they won't fall out of your ears when you backflip like AirPods or many other earbuds would. I'm not sure if there is an iPhone equivalent for that though, unless we bring the old iPod wrist loop out of retirement. Nike and Hermes partnerships with it, of course, but probably not. Swimproofing, like the Apple Watch has had for a while, wouldn't really be a sports thing for the iPhone, not for anyone besides Aquaman or Namer, but more of an underwater photography thing, which by itself would be hella cool, but Powerbeats aren't even swimproof now anyway. So yeah, I got nothing here, but let me know if you have any ideas for a pro sports iPhone in the comments. ProMotion, or up to 120 hertz dynamic refresh, straight off the iPads Pro, was also tops on many of your demandments. And it's easy to see why. Once you get used to the, what's beyond buttery smooth, creme fraiche smooth, scrolling and proper cinematic refresh rates, it's hard to go back. It'd be great for gamers, obviously, especially when paired with Apple Silicon, which can already drive games at a high frame rate. And Apple hasn't done ProMotion on OLED displays yet, so that'd be fun to see. We've also gotten enough gaming phones by now to know they require a glowing logo as well. Shout out to the Mr. Mobile, who's tried out more than his fair share already. Remember all those glowing Apple logos in coffee shops, classrooms, and Windows PC events? Yeah, like that, with like a billion more iPhones. It wouldn't be pro, but it sure would be likewise fun. Would be super interesting though, at least to me, would be a game controller module that would magnetically snap on, work smart connector style, and just provide crisp, crunchy physical controls for more precise, tactile gaming experiences. And I'm just spitballing here, so please reality check me in the comments, but allow them to broadcast over a gaming optimized version of AirPlay, tie it all into Apple Arcade, and then just let the Switch Times roulette. There have already been a ton of rumors about the next generation iPhone cameras, including an equilateral three camera system that includes an ultra wide angle for this year and a time of flight sensor for next year. Also bigger cameras, which is good given how far companies like Huawei are pushing sensor size and pixel binning. In other words, processing down data four to one from a 48 megapixel sensor to get the equivalent of a much, much better 12 megapixel image. Though obviously bigger isn't better if it also comes with bigger distortion and aberration. Which is why many of you also want to see better computational photography and not just portrait mode or smart HDR, but more like what Google's been doing to pull out far sharper, cleaner, everyday photos than their hardware alone would otherwise allow. We'll have to wait and see just how well any and all of this does when it ships, but I think to go truly pro, we may need modules here as well. I know it's never really been done successfully, like by Motorola or at all yet. 
pay red hydrogen. But the idea of something like a smart battery case, but slicker and sleeker with a smart connector that magnetically face huggers onto the back of the iPhone and gives the camera the Z index and more flexible lens system of a micro four thirds or DSLR just seems like the holy grail. You'd probably want a raw manual mode built into the camera app or a pro camera app to go with it too. Let me know in the comments. Some of you really want pro to mean customization, like Android but iOS, with the ability to change up the springboard window and icon management system to create more freeform app layouts or swap it out entirely for a third party launcher. Theme it top to bottom as well. Hello Comic Sans, I mean marker felt system font. I kid, a bit. Others want the equivalent of a Konami code to switch the device from being production fused to something closer to dev fused or the new research fused mode I talked about in the last video. In other words, the ability to run SSH, get a root shell, and of course, sideload apps. Apple is still Apple though, so I think all of this has to be filed under um, less likely pro options, at least in this dimension of the multiverse. In all dimensions though, if you're interested in getting into any and all of that, there's Brilliant. Brilliant is a problem solving website and app with a hands on approach. It offers over 50 interactive courses and one of the latest is differential equations too. It explores real world applications involving advanced differential equations. When the parameters of the Lorentz system are chosen just right, all solutions are attracted towards a very strange looking set that's neither an equilibrium nor a cycle. Effective learning is all about problem solving and Brilliant will help you learn and get practice. You'll come away better at solving problems. To support Vector and get unlimited access to Brilliant's courses and daily challenges, head on over to brilliant.org slash vector to get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Thanks Brilliant and thanks to all of you for supporting Vector. It's entirely possible probable even that if Apple does use the name iPhone Pro, it will be purely a function of marketing and consistency with other product lines. And that may be fine. It's certainly better than the Homer Simpson's Galaxy car approach. As much as part of me really wants to see Apple push the boundaries of what people can do on a phone, adding pro features pushes up the price as well. And I just know most everyone asking for more anything on these lists will also be among the first to complain if it pushes up the price even one more damn dollar. Because we're human. We want our cake and to eat yours too. More features, longer battery life, lower price, all in now. Please, but not thank you since you should have done it all last year. I'm also sure there's a ton of stuff I'm simply not considering and even more that I just plain failed to consider. So hit like if you do, subscribe or tell a friend or six about the channel if you haven't already, and then hit up the comments and let me know. What would you like Apple to do to make the next iPhone really pro for you? Thank you so much for watching and see you next video.